Did you know that there are actual stages to a meltdown? Some stages you can intervene in, others you just can't. Join us as we discuss the stages of a meltdown, when to intervene, and when to just wait it out. Welcome to my Spectrum Life podcast. My name is Jessica and I'm an autism mom. With me tonight is my good friend and co-host Kelsey. Hello and welcome. I'm a special education teacher with a master's in behavior. And tonight we're going to be talking about the stages of a meltdown. I was first uh, introduced to the stages of a meltdown when I, we went through the program called Project Rex in South Carolina. Um, it was a real eye-opener to me as an autism mom to see the differences between the meltdown and the tantrum put side by side, and then to go in and see the stages of a meltdown that I had never seen before. Um, so I, we did some research, um, and I actually pulled out my old notebook from Project Rex, mm -hmm. and I had, <laughs> yeah, I have me and my binders. Yep. I got a binder for everything. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I pulled that out and I was looking at it and I actually, um, probably last week or so, um, since we were doing this whole series on meltdowns, I checked out the, um, information page and, you know, the further reading, cause I'm a, I don't know. I love books <laughs> and these two books were recommended. Um, and the links for these are down in the show notes. So if you'd like to get a copy of them after you see and hear some of the information, you can just click on those and get one of them. Um, but yeah, both of these people were, this is, this is no more meltdowns by, um, Jed Baker. Yeah. I did not get his name. Yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> and this is high functioning autism and difficult moments by, uh, Brenda Smith miles and Ruthie Aspie. Um, and I did a lot more, um, I oh, probably got more in information from uh, high functioning autism. And I, when I was going through that, I found this really cool chart. So um, if is it okay. So this chart right here shows the cycles of the meltdown. Isn't that interesting? It's very interesting. Um, now that line at the bottom there where it says adult, um, let's see if I can pull it up here so I can see it closer. That says, I'm looking in my actual book, adult curve. That is, she's talking a lot in this part about um, like at school where somebody might have an adult with them. And so that's like the, what the reactions from the adult should be or what they usually are versus what you want to have them. I guess. Um, so it can, you know, it is stressful during the rage stage, I should say that. Um, and that's why that adult curve, I guess, is a little um, higher up there because it is, it is a little, um, can be a little bit uh, frustrating there. But um, I thought that graph was kind of really cool. I snapped a picture of it and uh, emailed it to myself so we could kind of look over these different stages um, but I do want to make sure that um, everybody knows that that is from that book. Um, and it's actually on page 14 in the book. Um, but I think it's a, a really interesting chart to kind of go by. And the first stage um, is the rumbling stage. Um, so that's where um, we begin to see the signs that things are beginning to bother a child or a person. Um, and we can use some intervention strategies there. Um, is that, what do you think that, is that what you've heard too? It is what I heard. And I tend to so see it a good bit too with the rumblings and mm -hmm. rumblings are not just um, verbal. It's also like tapping the foot. Um, mm -hmm. you can see them get agitated. Sometimes they don't have the words, but you can see them starting to get bothered. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a different, and that's kind of why in the, the, um, 
videos that I've done on Wednesdays, I've been um, asking people to go ahead and make a list because those triggers, those times when you see those little things, that's when you know, and that's when you, you've got to, you got to have a plan. You got to know what you're going to do to get out of this. Okay. Um, so those rumblings. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, and we kind of went through a different list of, you know, there's all sorts of things that can be in your rumblings. Um, that's when you're going to see some of your sensory uh, overloads or underwhelms. Um, when you're going to see some of that. Um, oh, oh, let's see. What else are you going to see in the rumblings? Um, one of the things that they even talked about was just like picking at your fingers and stuff like that, which um, are almost in a way wanting to shut down. Because a meltdown doesn't have to be, the rage stage does not have to be screaming and shouting and all that, right? No, it doesn't. Um, sometimes rage, that's what we talked about in our two podcasts back before, mm -hmm. that it could be just a change of personality. Because um, right. some of us have very quiet, when we're mad, mm -hmm. we go quiet. We don't, and yeah. we tend to go um, and do self injurious behavior rather than outward yeah. behavior. Which is, is very, very scary to do. So um, that's the kind of things you got to look for. And that's why um, I've been talking about the list. Um, stage two. You want to talk about that one there, Kelsey? Um, stage two deals with the rage that we're talking about. Um, this is where you have your concern with safety. Um, ultimately, um, in a classroom, if they tend to... Um, have the outward rage, they'll be throwing desk around, they'll be throwing themselves around. Um, this is mm -hmm. where we confuse a tantrum um, yeah. at this stage. Um, and ultimately, we can't give them intervention. We ultimately right. just have to remove the class kiddos, you know, the other mm -hmm. kiddos and just move desk. Um, if yeah. you're in the private ABA or at home, um, a lot of times they'll go up in their room and this is where you hear the door slamming. This is where you get the holes in the wall or the holes in the door. Um, some of yeah. those things. Um, whereas the rage that we we're talking about with those rage stage, you can ultimately mm -hmm. just, you go quiet, you shut down. Some of them go yeah. to sleep. Some yeah. of them sleep, <laughs> which is the yeah. best kind of one you want. But <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the place where, yeah. Um, and when they're in that rage stage, um, oh, one of the things I was seeing in um, that uh, Jed Baker brought out in his book, um, he was talking about how um, he says on page uh, 14 right here, he says, it's as if the emotion center has taken over the rest of the brain so that we don't have easy access to our reasoning ability. And that's, that's that rage stage. That's, um, where, you know, you just can't uh, reason with them and they're right. just totally overtaken with emotion. And when that happens, um, I know that there's been times when Curtis has gotten into that rage stage and he has said some horrible things. And we just got to, as parents, as teachers, we got to understand that when they're in that rage stage, it's, right. they don't, they don't right. mean what they're saying. They're just so overloaded that they can't handle it. And so they just you know, they go into this explosion, this rage, and they don't really, um, they can't, they're just saying, they're just talking. They're just yelling, kicking, hitting, whatever. Right. So, um, the last stage, and I know this is actually kind of easy to look at. This is the recovery stage. So right. this is when they are kind of coming down off of it. So we got to let them calm down as they need to. And that's where they may go to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to start to be, um, I don't know, they, that's when they start to be sorry for what has happened, correct? They do. Um, or they may go back into that rumbling stage with recovery, um, meaning they're still mm -hmm. bothered, they're still upset, but they are sorry. They recognize what has been yeah. going on. Um, they're rational brain is starting mm -hmm. to take over more than they're emotional, but there's still that ultimate frustration and that recovery. And that's where teachers or parents, mm -hmm. your best bet, this is not your teachable moment. Nope. <laughs> this is where you still let them calm. You let them ramble as much as you can without going back into the cycle. 
um, mm-hmm. and just let them do, let them be them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? and, and that's when we just got to comfort them um, and be there for them. And just, we can't start, you know, getting on them or try to tell them that if you don't stop now, blah, 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 blah. Or if you don't do this, um, that's just going to send them back into um, right. the meltdown, the rage stage again. And so you just got to be there and comfort them. Um, I don't know how many times, even to this day, I've had Curtis still try to crawl up in my lap. It's a little bit crazy <laughs> to have a 12 year old sitting in your lap, but you know, if that's what he needs, that's what he needs. Um, right. Just hug on him. And, and, you know, a lot of the times I think afterwards, if he hasn't just kind of gone to sleep or something, he usually comes up and wants a hug. Um, he's really sorry for what has happened. He um, would, you know, come and sit by me on the couch and want to cuddle or something like that. Um, right. To show you that he is sorry to say, is everything okay? Mm-hmm. All right. Um, now on the graph itself, it had two, um, things that I thought were really interesting. And that was that those teachable moments could only come in the very front when the child is regulated or after when they've completely calmed down, can you ever Correct. have a teachable moment? Correct. And you will know too, you'll know, <laughs> um, if you try to go into teach moment and they go back almost halfway through that rage or you could see him get really agitated, you know, not to continue. Yeah. Um, it's not them trying to be disrespectful or it's not them trying to get out of, I don't want to talk to this. This is just, I need a little bit more time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. And sometimes it just takes just a little, you know, we've got to be, we've got to be um, cognizant, I guess, of the word is the word of what is going on and when they are completely calm, when you can sit there and reason with them Correct. and calmly talk it out. Mm-hmm. You can't just start yelling, hollering or screaming or anything or be upset. You just got to wait for those moments. And I've, I've done that before, even if I've had to um, remove them from a situation because I could tell, you know, in the rumbling stage, we may have been in a public place and so I knew how it was going to go and I'll just take him out and we'll just sit in the car and I've let him have a complete meltdown in the car, screaming, hollering, everything in the car. And I just sit there and wait. Don't particularly care to care for that, um, but that's all you can do. You know, it, it's hard to hear um, right. the screaming and hollering and you just feel so bad because, you know, as mom, I start to think, what, what did I do wrong? Um, right. What was I not looking for? Right. And sometimes it's not even that, you know, we it's can't not. blame, you know, we can't blame ourselves. Right. Um, so we just gotta, you know, go through it, wait through it and then talk it out. And then sometimes even when they get to those teachable moments, they can actually tell us what happened. They can. You sure can. They'd be like, I felt this way because, or this is what bothered me the most. Mm hmm. I'll tell you. Yeah. And then, you know, to, you know, put that on that list again, <laughs> that list to keep it in the front. So you think, you know, and you can, you know, make a action plan for what to do and how to intervene when you need to. Right. Um, so we want to know, um, I don't, is there anything else that we can say about the stages of the meltdown per se? That's about it. That's all I can think of right now. I think you really did a really good job with it. Um, now we have put in the comments, the links to the two books. And we also put a um, link to a really good article that talked about that's written by um, Brenda Smith miles. And it talks about those stages of the meltdown and um, how to deal with them. But next week, I think we're going to go ahead and start talking about some intervention strategies. Correct. We are. Um, so that'll be interesting. And we've got our videos coming up this week. So after going through these stages, the, the rumblings, the rage and the recovery, um, we want to know from you, have you ever heard the stages of a meltdown named, um, or any information like this before comment on the video or, um, on YouTube or email us at info at myspectrumlife.com. 
Uh, and then Kelsey, where else can they find us? You can find us on Instagram and Facebook at My Spectrum Life. And you can find us on Twitter at My Spectrum Life with that number one. Be sure to like and subscribe to this video on YouTube and also hit that bell icon so that you can be notified when our videos come out this Wednesday <laughs> and Friday. That's right. Um, and we will have some more information on meltdowns and kind of some things that we see. Um, I'll be talking more about that list, I think. I think yeah. that's what I'm going to do. Because <laughs> um, that list is can be really, really, really helpful. Yes. So, um, yep. And then um, we'll wait to see what Kelsey has to talk to us about. That'll be a surprise. So make sure you yes. hit that bell notification thing. <laughs> and as always, remember, with a lot of faith, love, and fidget toys, you can make it. Bye. Bye.